color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Ed Nelson as Michael Rogers. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington. James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Joe Rossi has been forced to make a decision. His older brother, Dr. Michael Rossi, demanded that he tell him the full story of his recent life, the days before he came to Peyton Place. The full story of whatever criminal involvements forced him to run. But Joe Rossi has no intention of talking. He hoped his brother would provide a sanctuary, a place to hide, a place to let things cool down. He was wrong. And so, once again, he finds himself on the run. Tonight, Norman Harrington, completely unaware of the nature of the pressures on Joe, has agreed reluctantly to drive him outside of town to a major intersection where Joe can thumb a ride, a ride somewhere away from Dr. Michael Rossi and Peyton Place. More coffee? Yeah. Would you like some more? You in a hurry? No, I thought you were. Man, traffic's pretty steady at the junction, even this time of night. Well, where are you going? Wherever this would take me. Drink up. You know, I'm tired. I'm tired of this coffee, and I'm tired of the crummy music. I don't want to take you to the junction, and you don't want to go. We're both sitting here in this stupid diner waiting for somebody to tell us to go home, and nobody knows we're here. You want to tell somebody? Go ahead. I just want to go home. See you around. So do you. Joe, you want to go home too, don't you? Just go in there and call your brother and tell him you're sorry, even if you don't mean it. But it's not that simple. Come here. I've been in this routine before. I have an older brother. So does everybody. I mean, I wanted to cut out. Even when we were living at home, every time I'd leave the house, I wanted to just keep on going. I didn't care where. Tahiti, Alaska, anywhere Rodney was. Well, it's different between Mike and I. It's always different in the same kind of way. You see, Rodney's perfect. He's got a straight nose and curly hair, and he can drive a car faster than anybody in the world. He's got wall-to-wall -wall girls and a varsity letter to match each one of them. Because all I had was acne and a batting average of 195. <laughs> when did you quit the game? I did. And that's when we became friends. When I stopped hating him because I couldn't be Rodney Harrington. Oh, why don't you bottle it? Joe, look. You can't be Mike Rossi, so don't try. You're Joe Rossi, and that's your edge. Look, he's not on my back because I left the cap off the toothpaste, or because I forgot to shine my shoes. Sit down, will you? You know, it could have worked between Mike and me. I mean, for the first time, I felt everything was there. A chance, anyway. What changed it? Look, I'm in trouble, real trouble. Like the big kids. The police? My friends. My buddies. Can't you get out of it? Have you tried? What do you think I'm doing here? Oh, so you ran out, huh? Well, we had this thing going, a job. Something went wrong. They blamed me. Dom. He was put away for a while, but now he's out. So that's why you're here, hiding, huh? I had no place else to go. Well, by the looks of things, you still don't. Watch me. Joe. Let your brother help you. Give him a chance, the same chance that he gave you. He wouldn't understand. He'd understand you running away. Well, that's your style, isn't it? Whenever anything goes wrong, you just take off. You did it in New York, and you're doing it here. Look, you give me a lecture on what's right and wrong, and then throw me to the wolves. 
try him and find out. You want some of the action, that it? I mean, you want to see them tear me apart, huh? All right. Do it from here. And if he doesn't understand, just say goodbye and hang up. What do you need to lose? It's my dime. Look, he's your brother. If you take off from here, you can't even be Joe Rossi. You'll just be another guy with holes in your shoes and no place to catch your breath. You should bottle this, whatever it is. It's got a kick to it. Well, you know, he wasn't home. Let's put it toward the gas. I'll drive you home. I'll save you money, Noah. It was a long shot anyway. I mean, a dime doesn't buy much nowadays. Especially second chance. Don't give up so easily, Joe. Look, it just looks easy. Because I've had a lot of practice. Brother Benny? Yes, once. This morning. That's why the landlady put this on the door. Well, where is he? That's exactly what I was going to ask you. But to be positive, you don't know where he is or where he went. If he's gone, really gone, nobody could be happier than me. Or is it I? Sorry. You're Joe's big brother. His older brother. It's like I'm looking and talking to a grown-up Joe. Keep your kiss. Uh, Jill, what kind of trouble was my brother in back in New York? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Sorry. You know all about it. Dr. Rossi. You see, Joe told me all about you two. What is that supposed to mean? About the baby, the baby you gave away to the Carsons. The baby you keep insisting is Allison. Joe told me you were the mother and that he was the father. And you believed him? Yes, I believed him. Why? He bent my ear for hours, days, telling me how you never, and I mean never, believed anything he said. He convinced me of that. Why do you believe him now? Simply because I know when he's telling the truth. I never could tell. And I really wanted to try, so I finally gave up. What's your secret? I don't know, when he has nothing to gain, or when it's something against himself, then usually he's telling the truth. What I don't understand is how you can give your baby away to total strangers. You don't know your brother very well, do you? And I'll tell you something else. You don't know me either. The Rossi blood. You look just like your brother. When he doesn't get what he wants, when he wants it. Exactly what he does. He goes into the violent bag. Right about now, he's hitting it. That's what you'd like to do, isn't it? But you're too controlled to do that. You're not as primitive as he is. You're a gentleman. Professional, tight, mature, middle-aged, rigid. And afraid. Dad, you can't let go like your brother does. I'd imagine it'd do you some good. What do you think? My hmm? sister Lisa called me from New York. You're even afraid to talk about it, aren't you? She told me there was a guy named Dom that was looking for Joe. Why do you care about that? Because Joe's involved with him. 
What difference does that make to you now? I want to know about it. Talk to your brother. He's gone. He'll come back. He always does. Jill, what kind of trouble is Joe in back there? I'm sorry, but you've reached a disconnected number. I know you're the mother of that baby. And I know you've been lying to the Carsons the whole time. And you know what I'm talking about when I ask you about Dom and Joe and why Dom is looking for Joe. You know that. Don't you? Well, he's going to try and get in touch with you. He'll try and call you, get in touch with you somehow. I know that. When he does, I want you to tell me where he is. That's what I want you to do. Now, that's all I want you to do. Thank you. 